the wheat ripening in this field has gone through a warm and very humid vegetative period. Harvest time is still a few weeks off. But when you see so many white heads, it's obvious that the yield and quality of the crop are at serious risk. This is head blight or head scab and is becoming increasingly common wherever cereals are grown. It's symptomatic of a disease caused by fungal pathogens of the genus Fusarium. Harvest residues from the previous crop, in this case corn, are a common source of Fusarium inoculum. This inoculum causes infection of the heads. Corn, like wheat, belongs to the large group of crop plants that are susceptible to fungi in the genus Fusarium. For example, Fusarium culmorum and, above all, Fusarium graminearum cause ear rot of corn. Large quantities of plant residues that are infested with plant pathogenic species of Fusarium remain in the field after the harvest. If this crop debris isn't covered with soil, there will be plenty of nutrition for these pathogens, since they can survive as saprophytes. In the soil, many fusarium species form thick-walled resting spores. With these chlamydospores, they can survive underground for years. When wheat is sown in a seedbed infested with these pathogens, development of the seedlings is at risk. The delicate seed leaf, the cotyledon, is enclosed in the firmer germ sheath, the coleoptal. However, the coleoptal does not provide sufficient protection against the fusarium mycelium. The roots of the seedling also are an attractive target for these pathogens. Once the hyphae have penetrated into the root cells, the seedling usually dies, either while still underground or soon after emerging. This results in areas with only slight or patchy emergence of the seed. Very similar damage is caused by the pathogen that causes snow mold, Microdochium nivali, a fungus that previously was included in the genus Fusarium. A typical symptom of snow mold is brown bordered leaf blotches. If infected very early, the seedlings are often twisted, corkscrew like. Even for plants that are still undamaged at the tillering stage, fusarium species continue to pose a threat, especially in dry soil. From now on, the crown roots are a major gateway through which soil-borne fusarium species enter the plant. The mycelium advances into the crown node, and from there on into the stem base restricting the flow of nutrients from the roots into the above ground parts of the plant. The weakened plants turn brown, first on the leaf sheaths, then in the lower parts of the stem. The lesions at the base of the plant accelerate necrotization of the lower leaves. These necroses provide fusarium species with ideal conditions for sporulation. Their asexually formed conidia are usually spindle or sickle shaped, like these macroconidia of fusarium culmorum. Along with the cells that produce them, the conidia form a cushion like cluster, a sporodochium. 
development of the conidia, especially in hot, humid conditions, usually is complete by the time heading and flowering occur. Now, if there's prolonged rainfall, splashes of rain that hit the sporodokia carry the mature conidia from the stem base to higher leaves, right up to the flowering head. The pollen sacs suspended from the florets, the anthers, are particularly rich in nutrients. In warm, rainy weather, spores adhering to the anthers germinate rapidly. Most varieties of wheat have little resistance to infection, especially by aggressive pathogens like Fusarium colmorum and Fusarium graminearum. The complete life cycle of Fusarium graminearum includes, besides the asexual conidial stage, the anamorph, a sexual stage during which the ascospores are formed, the teleomorph Gibberella z. The ascospores mature in a fruiting body open at the top, a perithecium. The parathesia are found primarily on harvest residues like this corn debris. If parathesia are wetted by rain, the tube-like assai swell. As they're ejected from bursting assai, the ascospores are taken up by air currents. Thus, they're carried directly to the heads and the anthers. Here, like the conidia, the ascospores quickly germinate. Starting from the anthers, the hyphae often develop toward the filaments to which the anthers are attached. And along these, penetrate deep into the interior of the wheat floret, passing the remnants of the stigma and the style. Meanwhile, development of the kernel has already begun. From an infected filament, hyphae can spread to the seed coat, the pericarp. The hyphae penetrate into the outer cells of the endosperm. Right now, in the weeks after flowering, the endosperm is being filled intensively with assimilates from the leaves. Fusarium species release a number of toxic substances from their hyphae. These mycotoxins can facilitate colonization of the plant tissue by the fungus, in this case, the starch-containing storage cells. Increasingly, the mycelium also penetrates into the interior of the central axis, the rachis. This is where the vascular system is located that carries water and nutrients to the spikelets. The intruding mycelium interrupts the flow of nutrients. The affected spikelets are starved. They bleach out and die prematurely. Within the rachis, the fungus usually proliferates downward. And thus, gradually, the characteristic picture of head blight evolves. Finally, on the glooms, and in particular on their edges, a salmon-colored spore coating develops. Head fusarioses can result in substantial losses. Not only are the quantity and size of the kernels reduced, but above all, due to contamination with numerous chemically very different mycotoxins, the quality of the grain suffers. If these mycotoxins find their way into the gastrointestinal tracts of mammals, they may cause acute or chronic poisoning. A variety of symptoms can occur, depending on which mycotoxins predominate in the food chains of humans and animals. Elimination of lightweight seed reduces the mycotoxin contamination. 
But even after storage, mycotoxins may continue to be produced, especially if the relative humidity is high. Considering the high potential for damage caused by fusarium species, it's imperative that fusarium diseases be managed preventatively. This includes selecting the proper variety, planting wheat in crop rotations of high diversity, and cultivating the soil to reduce residual inoculum.